My name is Isabel Aracama. I am a designer and an illustrator. And I also have worked for many years in software development. So most of the people know my work because it's high in details and full of realism. But I would say that's just a half truth because it all depends on, on the project I'm working on. I currently work as a freelance illustrator and designer and I also teach classes both offline and online. Another thing I'm really, really interested in is in telling the whole world about good software. And this is where Affinity Designer comes in place. I started using it about five years ago and I fell in love with it from the very first moment. So today we're going to be doing an illustration together. You will be able to see all my workflow. You will be also able to download the files that I provide so you can explore them inside out. And so, yeah, ask me whatever you want. You find me all around the internet. No problem to find me. So reach out and let's just chat. Okay, let's start. Okay, so this is the artwork we are going to be completing in this tutorial. And it's done completely in Affinity Designer using vectors. And only that, not the pixel persona, only the designer persona. So the first thing I would like you to do, if you want to work along with me, or if you want to do it later on, is opening a canvas like this one I have in here, where you can see I have my finished artwork, but I also on top have a reference picture. Well, you know now Affinity Designer comes with the stock panel, which is great to access Unsplash, Pixabay, and Pexels. So you can just grab them from there. And as you can see in here, I made a search for Helsinki Bridge. If you make that search, you're gonna get this image here, which is the one we're gonna be using. Once you pull it out, you're gonna see it's much bigger. So just size it down. And you're gonna see another thing, which is, well, I'm gonna do it myself. Now it's gonna be massive. Yeah, that's a big one. We can close that one now. I'm gonna zoom out and I'm gonna make it a bit smaller, like so. And as you can see in here, the original image has some differences with the one I prepared for my artwork, for my reference. And the main difference is that, well, I found this one to be a little bit monotonous in colors and a little bit too dark. So what I've done to this reference image, basically, is uh, first off, I added a bit of brightness and contrast with a layer. You can see it in here. Mm -hmm. Here it is. And I also added some simple shapes with some colors, like the field you see in here with an overlay as a blending mode and another one that is an ellipse all over. So if I remove them, you can see here the colors change and also the brightness and contrast. It's just exactly like the reference. So uh, what I usually do is I prepare my images in such a way that they look more attractive and more as I want my final artwork to look color wise. Okay. So we have here the reference and I'm going to just remove it from there. So let's go and start working. So we're going to start with the background, which would correspond mainly to the sky. I'm going to cover the whole thing, even where the water is going to be, but we will cover it later. I'm creating kind of like a placeholder here and you can see I already have more or less the colors I need. That, by the way, is not exactly the way I want it because this is horizontal and what I want it to be is vertical. So let's put it more or less like this. Now, the next thing I'm going to be doing is the sea. That is all this area here that you can see. And for that, I think what I'm going to do is zoom in a bit. I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm going to draw it like so. Something like this. A bit irregular, this line. I don't want it to be straight. Now, this is going to be passing the boundaries, so I don't really care. We close this shape and now I'm going to make it bigger. So it fits my artwork here. And of course I have to give it a color. So I'm going to grab the color picker and I'm going to start working with a base color for the C that initially I would say it's going to be something like along these lines. And as you can see in here, I'm going to add a bit of noise. I always like to add a little bit of noise so things look not so plasticky. I kind of like it. So we have set so far the sky and the sea. Now, the next thing I'm going to be at least blocking, it's going to be the bridge, which I would say it's the most difficult 
thing for me to do here because, you know, if you don't get right the perspective, it may look meh, not so good. So again, I'm going to trace it with the pen tool coming until here. I'm going to give it a fill color, which is going to go somewhere along these lines. And basically what I want to do is give the whole piece a base color and then I will be subtracting shapes. So for that, I'm going to center my canvas and I'm going to put this one here and I'm going to make it bigger. So now I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to duplicate it two times. So you can see here in the layers panel. I'm going to offset it a little bit, like so. I'm going to give it a bit of a uh, an angle, something like this. Because basically what I want to create is this area here that starts with this width and in the vanishing points reduces quite a lot. And now I'm going to subtract with the booleans, like so. Now I have created a compound because I didn't want it to be destructive, so I can just modify it in case I don't like the way it resulted. Like for example, I'm going to make it thicker there. Okay, so now I'm going to select it and I'm going to grab the color picker, select this color and add a bit of noise to it. And I am going to put it there. What I want to do now is masking it inside. Now I'm going to be creating this black area there. So for that one, I just need to duplicate this. I am going to offset it a bit, move it down, give it a darker color. And what I need to do is give it an angle. I just go jumping to block most of the things, the important things, the elements. So I have an idea of the overall thing. So for that, I'm going to grab the pen tool and I'm not gonna exactly follow what I see. I'm just gonna go quite loose like this. So let's just do this. I'm gonna give it a color. I'm gonna give it a bit of, um, again, noise. Pull it down to my canvas, to my artwork. Yeah, there we go. Just make it bigger. And so now, because this is too sharp, I'm going to grab my corner tool and I'm going to start making everything softer, like so. I select them all and now I go with the corner tool and I do exactly the same thing I've done before, but just in one go, which I could have done. <laughs> I just didn't think of it. Now I grab this one and I'm going to put it below the bridge. The bridge. The bridge is the part that, um, yeah, took me more time for obvious reasons. It's full of little stuff. So I'm going to pull that thing out. I'm going to get rid of those and I'm going to create another Boolean subtracting. Bang. If you wonder what this is, well, you're going to see it now. I'm going to select this one here and probably you guessed it already. So yeah, I'm creating the bar that you see on top of the bridge. Uh, starting, I'm going to try just with the angle like so. Okay. So we have our main shapes all blocked already. So once we have everything blocked in, we can start having fun with the blending modes, which is what is going to give you all these lights and shadows and stuff going on, which makes it so attractive to the eye. So that is all done with the blending modes. The first thing I would like to do though, first is modifying a bit the sky because I'm not really convinced about how the gradient is looking. What I like to do is mm, grab your swatches panel, go into view, studio and swatches. Okay. So what I like to do is creating a palette from documents as a document palette. And so with that, I have all the colors that are contained in here in my reference. Then I can use them in my artwork. Okay. So I'm going to pass this somewhere here. And as I said, I'm going to start having fun with the lights and stuff. 
So this one, I'm gonna give it some other color, somewhere maybe here, and I'm gonna go to the layers panel and start playing with the blending modes. Um, let's try with hard light. Of course, I need to give it a Gaussian blur, something like this. So that's my color panel. Yeah, that could work. That could work. And I think I'm going to convert this to course, so it's not a circle, so I can just, you know, move it as I want. Obviously, we need this one to be masked inside the sky, which would be the main placeholder in there. I'm going to duplicate it just to make it more prominent. Maybe move it a bit on the top, like so. That looks pretty nice. I like also to introduce some other kind of elements that are more sharp, not so blurry, just to give a different look to some of the elements there. I give some transparencies, something like this. That's fine. Now I start just, you know, duplicating things and changing the colors and seeing how it all works together. I'm gonna go in the pink and purple side of things. I'm gonna maybe put it there, somewhere like there, and start moving it around. Maybe I change the blending modes to something different. It just depends on how I feel about the overall look. Yeah, I like the overlay that I just duplicated, maybe changing it in color a bit more. Something like this. I am going to grab it again and duplicating it. I'm going to pass it here, which is actually here in the water area. And I'm gonna just start looking at colors that I may like for my river. And again, changing the blending modes. It's key and stacking layers of color. Mm, something like that. Now I'm going to duplicate the main rectangle that I used for the water, and I'm going to blend it. Mm, I like that. Mm, I like that too. Yeah, that one. That one works very, very well. So we are building now our water, blending all the colors together, as you can see, with shapes, blending modes, and gradients and transparencies. Okay, so now that we have some of the main shapes in and some of the lights blending in the artwork, um, I usually like to go for some of the elements that I really like in this artwork. So what I'm going to be doing is the lamp. So for that, I'm gonna grab the rectangle tool. I'm gonna give the fill a nice color Something like this. For these parts here, we're gonna be grabbing the pen tool. And, well, I can even do it the easiest way, which is just tracing sharp notes. And now with the note tool, just pulling like this and pulling a bit like this. And now I grab my corner tool and make this super soft. And we're gonna give it the thickness, opa. Not that much. That's fine. I'm gonna change the ends to something square and I'm gonna give you the right color, which would be the same as the rest of the lamp. So we're gonna pass it there. Even a bit thicker it can be. That's fine. Now we're gonna do this. Well, actually, we're gonna do this little piece in there. Just put that piece in there. Not many complications with it. Now we're gonna do this, I'm gonna zoom in. As you can see, we just grab a circle, put it there. I'm gonna convert it into curves. So that way it's not so perfect because this is a haze of light and it's spreading and so forth. So I don't want it to be perfect. We're gonna make it almost white, if not completely white. And we're gonna go to effects. We're gonna give it a go blur, something like 0, 0,3 or 4, something like that. Now we select it, we duplicate it, we go to layers panel, we gra grab the one below, we make it 
bigger, something like there. We can even manipulate a bit the shape. Now we're gonna go in the pink area of the color wheel, somewhere like there. We're gonna give it a bit of an opacity, like so, and more of a Gaussian blur, somewhere there. Actually, I feel it's too cold, so I'm gonna put it more to the red. And you may be wondering why is she not using a, an outer glow? Well, because I want to use the outer glow now for this yellow here. So in the effects panel, we say outer glow, we give it a radius, we give it a yellow color, something like this. And obviously it needs to be more hazy. So let's just make it like this. Probably this can even be a bit smaller this and like this and this one I think can be a bit bigger oh. let's see the effect from a distance which will make it much easier to know if we are in the right path or not so we're gonna put it there and yeah it works it works pretty well so we're gonna group it and we're gonna pass it somewhere here can be Opa. It can be slightly bigger because our artwork is bigger than this one, but yeah, somewhere along those lines, I think it works. Now we duplicate it, we flip it, and we put it here. But obviously, this cannot be there because we are seeing the whole thing on the top layer. So we're gonna pass our street lights below the bridge, somewhere there. That's fine. Now, we duplicate this one and we put it somewhere here. I think that works pretty well. And the same for the rest. Now, as we go, actually, I'm gonna trace this line here to the vanishing point. So I more or less get a perspective or otherwise it's gonna be looking weird. Ah, so we're gonna give it a color it's just a, a guide for the moment for me to see more or less where things have to be placed somewhere there i'm gonna give it an 80 percent transparency because as, as they fade away they are not so visible 90 percent maybe the next one is gonna be somewhere like here and this one is gonna be 60 percent opacity or even 50 somewhere there. I'm gonna keep on working on the bridge. I need this black area. So, you guessed right. I grab this, I put it there, I duplicate it, I pull it up, I grab them both, and I make a boolean and give it a color, somewhere like that. And now, because I like to have fun, I'm going to be playing a little bit more with the lights in the sky and so forth and in the water obviously i want this to be on back let's just see ah oh. mm. nice 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 probably i want this one to be not so blurry oh it's nice <laughs> Somewhere like there, I'm going to duplicate it. Mm -hmm. Now it's a matter of trying different stacking and blending modes of blue. So for it not to cut too roughly here, I usually what I do is add a bit of a transparency like this, so it's more gradual. Something like that. So now, um, we have to build these pieces there. This is gonna be just a matter of grabbing the rectangle tool, like so. I duplicate it and I put it here, like so. Now we have all of this, we group them together, we duplicate them, we're gonna make them slightly smaller and like this it's good oh 
Okay. And again, group them. And we come down to the bridge. And we make them slightly bigger. Hmm, what I see here, maybe the this land needs to be a little bit not so much there because it's just in collusion with the bridge. And this one's in here, not this one. This one and this one. I'm gonna make them a bit more like that so it's more interesting. Let's go again with the lights and add more stuff in there. I actually want to put this on top of this and make it like so. So it looks like uh, the sun is hitting on the on the mountains, which gives for a very nice look to the whole thing. This one is to present. I'm going to give it a bit of a transparency like so. Good. So now I would like to take care of these elements in here. If we take a look at my other artwork, the one that I more or less finished, these are just two strokes. It's very simple. So nothing special. You, you see them here. So it's a group of strokes. Hmm? I'm going to grab them. And I'm going to put them here. So I'm going to use them so I don't have to trace them. And it takes me less time to work on it. But as you can see, it's just a couple of strokes. Now I'm going to create a line in here, which would correspond to this line in there. So I'm going to just put it until there, a bit thicker. Now I'm going to pull it down, down there. Yeah, that looks quite good. Now I'm going to duplicate them, make them a bit smaller. And I'm going to put some more in here. Also, what I need to do is changing the color for this one, which has only a base color at the moment. So I'm going to make it more like I see my reference. And for that, I'm going to change the gradient to something like this. I feel that's a little bit dead. That's the color. I'm going to change this one too, to something more like what I see in here. Not bad, always with a bit of noise. That's good. And I feel it's also a good moment to start grouping things. So, yeah, I should have done it before, but I'm talking and so forth. And well, sometimes, but don't let it just go too far before you start making some order out of things. This one is the C. And this one should go inside the C. Now let's add some of the shadows under the bridge in a very loose way, nothing really complex, something like this, two simple shapes, something like this, maybe give it a bit of a transparency, 80%, I'm going to duplicate it, I'm going to pass it here. Okay, so now I'm going to pull this one up and I'm going to make a change here just to make it a little bit more interesting, more prominent there. And I'm going to add like a wire or something, like a cable. I know I don't have it in my reference, but it looks more interesting. So I have this in here. I'm going to make it smaller. Now I duplicate it and I pass it somewhere like here. Okay. It's not bad, but I'm going to give it a bit of a transparency. That looks better. Good. Okay. So now I would like to add a little bit of the reflections under the bridge. So I'm going to just go like this. I'm going to change the color for them. Let's see. But basically what you can see here is just uh, rectangles. Gradients, transparencies, you know, put them all together. And I'm going to play a bit with the blending modes. I kind of don't like these ones. Maybe I just leave them very, very subtle. 
which will work much better. Now I'm going to introduce here a change in the waves for the sea. I'm going to give it a transparency and I'm going to try again with the blending modes and more transparent. I don't want it to be too much in my way. Now I feel the sea could be darker. Now I probably want to add some darkness here as a shadow. Something like this. I'm gonna change the color for it. Wake. And of course I need to change the blending mode. Let's just get closer. Those are flying. Now these ones need to move a bit. Right there. Let's up the little moon that I put in there because I think it's just, it, it makes for, you know, it guides a bit your eye in the whole thing. And it's not only about the bridge. Let's give it a transparency like so. Maybe a little bit more high up, somewhere there. I want to play a bit more with the colors, the blending modes. Just make some changes. Ah, that's too green. That is nice even nicer okay and i need for sure to work lights over the bridge maybe this needs to be here and that's it and we start just you know giving the bridge a bit of interest because it was a little bit dead in colors okay And another thing I want to do is just taking this, I'm gonna give the lights a bit of atmosphere around because I think it's gonna look very nice. Actually, we can even get rid of this and just leave it that, like that. Mm. Oh, that's maybe too visible there. A bit less and a bit more of a Gaussian blur and maybe I even change the color to something more orange something like that right so now I'm going to time lapse what is left to do in this artwork which is mainly the fine tuning and last touches to it otherwise it would be too long as it takes me a little bit more than this video lasts to complete and at the end you're gonna see the result and you will be able to download the file so you can explore it it's all well organized in different layers with colors, names and all. So it's easier for you to see what's going on there. And you can also ask me. So I see you at the end of the video with the results. So this is one of the final artworks I have because as I said at the very beginning, I prepared one before starting this tutorial 
Then I created this one as we were just working together. Out of them too, I have different versions. The whole purpose of this is to see how easy it is to change the mood of one single illustration just by changing a few colors and the blending modes because it's all about combining them both. So go ahead, download them, explore them inside out, ask me whatever you want. And just one thing, this is addictive, so don't get too hooked because you may end up with a thousand different versions of the same illustration and it will be very, very difficult to choose which one you prefer. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and send you a kiss. Thank you for watching. Bye.